Radio Free Innsmouth episode 317. You know, about a month ago, I covered this old Swedish death metal band called Crematory. Remember when it's the lowest form of conversation. That have always been kind of one of my favorites because they don't really sound like your standard Swedish death metal band. And in that episode, I mentioned that one of the guitarists on their very first demo left to join another band called Afflicted Convulsion. And I intimated that maybe someday I would cover that band. Guess what? That's what this episode's going to be about. We're covering Afflicted Convulsion, later on just known as Afflicted who are somewhat similar to Crematory in that they don't really sound like your standard Swedish death metal band, but that's about where the similarities end between those two. Crematory played this really dirty sort of death grind with slight doom metal elements. Afflicted line up with Sentenced on their second album and that they are one of the few bands from that corner of the world that was heavily influenced by the Floridian progressive death thrash band Atheist. You know, with the... And all that... Type stuff going on and despite that aesthetically they are very similar in terms of guitar sound and aesthetics to a lot of Swedish death metal at the time with all of that super loud fat snare drum and super buzzy thick guitar tone now how on earth do you combine the weird progressive almost jazzy sound of atheist with that really dirty swedish death metal sound it sounds like a certified let's find out moment to me and what better way to start than with the first song on their first full-length album so yeah it definitely sounds swedish but it's uh considerably more bohemian in terms of variety of aesthetics than your standard Swedish death metal album from the time period. Lots of weird little clean interludes, lots of flanger. The bass is considerably louder and higher up in the mix due to the guitars not being as down-tuned. The songs are a lot more structurally complex. The vocals, however, are definitely vintage Swede death, albeit a little bit more warped and varied in their affectation. Like right here. There's also a much more noticeable thrash metal influence, but that does give way to a lot of sort of proto-melodic death metal stuff going on. But even then, much like their partners in atheist influence crying sentence, said melodic death metal is a lot more dissonant and strange than the genre usually seen as being nowadays. And that's not just because of the vocals, which as you're hearing right now are pretty fucked up sounding. No, it's because they take that death metal complexity and disregard for standard compositional rules and apply it to more standard sounding melodies. Add to that the psychedelic influence, you get whatever the hell this shit is. Definitely super bizarre sounding stuff, particularly in the lead guitar department, but also in how scattershot the overall song structures are and how they're put together. A whole lot of stops and starts and separate movements and many songs within songs. This song in particular is pretty bonkers because it's the only song that was new specifically for this album. Every other song on the first Afflicted album was a recreation of something they'd been doing back from their demo days. So I feel like they really wanted to let people know at the start of this album, hey, this is going to be some weird shit. <laughs> But speaking of those demos, that's a pretty important part of the Afflicted Convulsion story, because these guys are ancient. I'm old, I'm dying. They were part of the first wave of Swedish death metal, along with like Morbid and Nihilist, a very important part of the early death metal scene, particularly in Scandinavia. And their very first demo might not be quite what you would expect, given what you just heard of their first full-length album. It's certainly quite a bit more 80s sounding, very 80s underground type of stuff. In fact, I would say it's not even terribly death metal at all. Much more in the realm of technical thrash metal, particularly once those vocals kick in. And once they do, uh... You kind of wish they hadn't. This first demo is seen as something of a non-canonical work by the band themselves, if you read the liner notes to their demo compilation. And yeah, it really does belong more to like very demo level thrash stuff compared to the death metal they would become famous for. The first real Afflicted Convulsion demo where you can tell, you know, this is Afflicted would have to be their second release, delightfully entitled Psychedelic Grindcore. This one uh, is even fucking rawer than their first demo. In fact, upon first listen, you might think that this was a 
a rehearsal recording mischaracterized as a demo, but it was released as a demo, so who am I to criticize? I actually kind of like the sound of it. I feel like if you can get into stuff like Dark Throne's Goat Lord album, you could probably get used to the sound of this. The riffs themselves are pretty fucking fantastic. Definitely showing off their early pen shock for very intricate riffing patterns. That omnipresent atheist influence hasn't shown up yet. Instead, I hear a whole lot of autopsy to this music. Very swampy, sort of filthy death metal. Now, if only the vocals this time around managed to be a little better. Yeah, stop that shit immediately. They're even worse this time around. I mean, when you can make them out, it just sounds like a loud, echoing sort of noise. Again, this demo really does sound more like a rehearsal to me, like they're all just playing in a concrete-lined room somewhere, all reverbed out and messy, and you can barely tell what the fuck's going on. Which might have been why a couple demos after this, they changed their name to just Afflicted from Afflicted Convulsion. You know, they were tired of being known as the band with uh, absolutely trash-sounding demos. And when they did switch over to the name Afflicted, their music got a a whole lot better in my opinion to the point where I would consider the afflicted demos pretty much all to be 100% Swedish death metal classics this is a certified <laughs> classic beginning with 1990s odious reflection I mean this one just sounds spectacular their sound really came together on this one including all that stop star type stuff I mean, this sounds like some fucking psychedelic grindcore. Real fucking weirdo hours. Lots of tempo shifts, too. With the core of the music being that very D-beat heavy punkish style of Swedish death metal that was really starting to take off around 1990. Speaking of death metal, those vocals, way more proper death metal this time around. No more indiscernible shouting or warmed over thrash metal. This is straight up death metal shit. Appropriately evil and sinister sounding with just a hint of the weirdness they would become known for later on. Anyways, now we're jumping back into the psychedelic grindcore with super fast and super sloppy sort of blast beats that you didn't really hear other Swedish bands doing. Also got the very first appearance of that very prominent bass guitar which would become such an important part of their sound going into the full length album. Probably the most psychedelic component of the music and it allows them to do weird shit with the music like this before jumping back into the more normal sounding death metal stuff. I've seen a lot of people compare this era of Afflicted's demos to stuff like very early At The Gates or Grotesque liars and wait kind of the lunatic fringe of Swedish death metal at the time and yeah they're definitely part of that after Odie's reflection they started getting into really putting out demos that were demonstrating what their first full-length album was gonna sound like remember pretty much every song on that album except for the first one started out as a demo track my personal favorite of these being tidings from the blue sphere this song off of the Wanderland demo from 1991 really shows off what Afflicted were gonna be about going forward. You got these weird fucking clean guitar parts, building anticipation for some very non-standard for death metal of the time sounding stuff. The tracks from this demo were actually put out as an official 7-inch, also under the title of Wanderland, by Relapse Records back in the day. So these guys had the ears of a lot of the death metal elites that existed at the time. This song in particular sticks out for being Afflicted's weird interpretation of what doom metal sounds like, with these strange sort of bendy kind of riffs, incorporating a lot of dissonant chromatic intervals between the notes that they pick out. This part right here being a particularly good example of that kind of thing. You know, maybe it's a little bit slow for some people like their death metal real fast. But I think the abrupt transition should serve to keep your average death metal listener awake. And it does speed up as we get into this particularly well done counterpoint section utilizing that Swedish death metal D beat ever so effectively. The drummer doing all kinds of crazy fucking tom rolls all over the place. And you can see why this demo was put out as an official release because man does it sound nice. Gotta have that weird shit. Man, that is some chunky Campbell soup rich right there. Good stuff. And from here, you can tell they're definitely ready to record a full length album. If your demos are coming out sounding like professional material, you're probably good to go as far as recording a full length. And that they did. And as I mentioned earlier, most of the full length was just reworks the songs from the demos, except for that one new song. That's a good question. Which one's better, the demo versions or the album versions? I don't know if I'd really say I prefer one over the other. The demo versions tend to to not be as frantic as the full length album versions. And yet at the same time, they're also a little bit more death metal-y than what we ended up getting on the full length. Demos might do a guitar solo section like. <laughs> 
Then that same part happens on the full length album and it sounds more like. You know, the rhythm guitars and the drums are way more frantic and out there, but the lead guitar melody itself is way more almost kind of hippie, bluesy, life metal-y. Fucking quiz! That tends to be the primary difference between Afflicted on the demos and Afflicted on the album. Not that Afflicted's first full-length album isn't death metal, because it definitely is a real old-school death metal album. Real nasty one, too. You know, you get your little chugga chugga bolt thrower action mixed up with rhythmic variants of riffs. This particular song, Consumed in Flames, starts out sounding normal Swedish death metal enough, but it very abruptly transitions into weirder territory with these dissonant tremolo pick riffs and percussive accents. When that percussive accented riff comes around the second time, it unfolds into a whole new riff section. Drumming on this album is great as you can hear this ride cymbal work reminds me a lot of Dave Lombardo on the third Slayer album. And as you figured out by now, the vocals are pretty fucking crazy. Kind of taking the more normal, understandable approach of guys like Matt Karki from Dismember, LG Petrov from Entombed, and pushing it into weirder areas. Unfortunately, that particular member of Afflicted One, Joaquin Brahms, would be the sole member from this album's lineup that did not come back from the follow-up effort. 1995's Dawn of Glory, which, uh, from what I understood up until a few years ago, was kind of seen as, like, a pretty major style change and sort of a sellout album on the level of a uh, Wolverine Blues from Entombed or Gorefest's Erase, which actually is a really good album, despite what you may have been led to believe. Listen to uh, episode 155 for more info on that. But the second Afflicted album, I didn't really give it a serious listen until a few years ago. I'd been a fan of the early Afflicted material going back years after first hearing them on a relapsed single series compilation featuring two songs in the Wonderland demo that I had initially purchased to hear Mythic Soul EP. I bought Prodigal Son probably sometime around 2008 after it was reissued by the Polish label Metal Mind. But all I knew about Dawn of Glory was that apparently they changed their style to power metal and to a younger and much more extreme version of the job you all know and love. That didn't sound like something I was be interested in. Which is a damn shame because uh, Dawn of Glory, definitely not a death metal album, but honestly a pretty interesting metal album despite that. To start with, the music itself definitely carries a power metal aesthetic, but the album itself is produced in the manner of a Swedish death metal album. With the super loud and fat snare drum and total chainsaw guitar riffs, not really something you'd expect from a power metal album. A lot more muscular. But not only is the aesthetic considerably more extreme than most power metal albums, the riffing itself and the way the songs are put together are a lot more complex and more extreme metal than their affectations than power metal sounding. Like the vocals and the guitars aren't necessarily always slaved to the same melodic lines. They kind of bounce off of each other. The song structures are a lot more complex, have way more twists and turns. And if you were to replace the vocals with growls, this would sound a lot a lot like an early complex melodic death metal album. Like this boomy riff set right here, that's not power metal at all. And it makes me interested to hear what this album could have sounded like if it did have Joaquin Brahms doing growling vocals. Although the new guy also gets pretty fucking extreme at times, especially for a power metal vocalist. Yeah, that fucking riff under there, that's not power metal at all, dude. And a lot of the songs in this album are even less power metal sounding than that particular track. This album also gets pretty darn doomy and groovy at times. Like this song right here entitled The Oracle almost sounds like it could have been a Grand Magus track just two decades before that band started playing this kind of material. Heavy stuff. Again, a lot of times the vocals don't necessarily follow the same melody as the guitars that kind of bounce off of shit. And overall, the music is a lot more guitar-led than your standard power metal act. Although during sections like this one right here, the vocals definitely take the lead melodically. It's kind of a tug-of-war between the two. Hanging into some straight-up stoner shit. Yeah? Yeah. <coughs> This part's pretty cool. That earlier kind of mandatory suicide sounding riff comes back. So you got this sneaky melodic guitar line creeping up under it that eventually unfolds into some real bluesy kind of harmonies with that real rollicking bass guitar going on loud underneath it. And from there you get into your standard sort of power metal solo trade-off section, but the riffs underneath this part too almost sound more like death and roll era in tune than what you would normally play under a power metal solo. Then jumping back into some very 90s stoner rock sounding groove riffs. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 
for whatever reason, be it people being too lazy to actually check out this album or whatever's going on, it always gets classified as like a power metal album, but it's got just as much kind of groovy doom metal to it. And it's at its best when it manages to combine those two styles, as well as turn up the death metal knob just a little bit more. Like this part right here, the drums underneath are total speed metal shit, but the riffs are these real thick and nasty Swedish death metal, almost desultory sounding things. And from there it jumps into this total like candle mass sounding section, dude. Like the doom metal on this album isn't even always necessarily the stoner stuff. This sounds a lot like Solitude Eternus, candle mass, that kind of epic doom thing. And from there, some decidedly even less power metal sounding stuff. Again, it's got a lot in common with the death and roll material that was popular around the era of Wolverine blues and massive killing capacity. Speaking of which, this lead guitar section come up here is some total in tune style shit. And the vocals get a lot more extreme to match that sort of atmosphere before it goes back into more power metal territory. Still using that same more death and rolly style riff as its basis, and also bringing back some of those more jam rock styled sections that were all over their first album. Overall, I'd say this album's actually fucking amazing, and the metal scene's ignorance of it is a hideous misdeed. I think you meant cheated! And it's all mostly due to this album being grossly miscategorized as just being, oh, the death metal band that turned into a power metal band. That's not what's going on here. I'll tell you what's going on here. The second Afflicted album is an inverted death and roll album, because think about it. You might wonder, man, I fucking love Entombed. What's with all these, like, hardcore power violence doofus bands trying to bring that style into their caveman music? nowadays. Well, here's the thing, man. Wolverine Blues, I think it's a fine album. It's fun, but it's definitely music for bozos. <laughs> Fuck you. Like, yeah, it's catchy, but it's straight bozo core. It appeals to the bozo mindset. The in-roll of their particular variety of death and roll it's just like, like Kiss or some corporate rock. If you looked at Afflicted second album as a death and roll album, the in-roll there is like shredding speed metal shit. Fucking 80s epic doom metal. You know, way more true metal than Kiss. And the death part of their death and roll equation is, you know, that first Afflicted album, which as we've established is pretty fucking dank. So I feel like you'd get a lot more enjoyment out of that second Afflicted album if you look at it as just like a really interesting take on what a death and roll sound could sound like. But hey, that's just one man's opinion. Maybe you agree, maybe you disagree, whatever. Thanks for listening or watching or whatever you did. Go check out some Afflicted and I'll see you next time. I have to push him in the lake under the ice. My little dog, Body. He said, Body, come back, Body. I know you can but hey, your dog is, oh my god, he under the ice, he said, what? She wasn't mean to me. I said, I know, but the rules, the rules.